Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Pac-Man Jones with Savannah Seaport News, and today I just want to report some things that just been happening in the city. Some things I just haven't really been getting into lately because I've just been busy. But we had a we had a shooting Thursday night off Skidaway Road near uh, Fernwood Drive. Police responded to a 33-year-old Keith Wright suffering from a non-life-threatening gunshot wound. Uh, Reportedly, Wright was traveling on a scooter when an unknown armed suspect approached him, attempt, attempting to take his scooter. Uh, he was able to get away, but in the process of him fleeing the scene, he, the guy, the suspect, shot at him and uh, wounded him. Um, he went to Memorial, and he's in good condition. Uh, this shooting, like I said, it happened uh, Thursday night around 6:15 p.m. Now, we had another shooting on the east side area uh, Thursday night going into uh, Friday morning, uh, just right before midnight. Uh, there was a shooting on La Roche Avenue in Skidaway to find 22-year-old Shaquem Deuce suffering from a lawn knife threat threatening gunshot wound. He was reportedly inside a sports bar in the area where two groups of unknown people were fighting inside Dallas and the two groups left the bar at the same time the gunfire erupted outside uh, Dallas the guy who I'm showing you Shaquem Dallas uh, and he initially gave them a different name uh, but later they found out his true identity and determined that he had an outstanding warrant in other counties and he has a probation hold and um, other stuff like that and he was transported to memorial he i mean he's he's fine i believe he just was shot in the arm um the sports bar they're talking about is overtime i'm showing you the video of overtime sports bar that's another uh bar slash club on the east side that's right across from savannah state um about overtime i don't really go on overtime like that because like once every two three months of something like a uh a event at overtime a shooting happens i mean i always hear shooting after shooting after shooting at overtime and, and it's not i don't really think shootings happen inside overtime I, I believe it just mainly all the shootings that i already always hear about at overtime it always happened outside of it and it gives overtime a bad reputation and it's I mean, it's overtime is populated because I mean, like I said, it's right across from Savannah State, so a lot of the college students go there. I mean, a lot of African African American blacks go to that sports bar. So, I mean, you just got a lot of a lot of uh, the young bucks guys that's my age and younger. Wherever they go, they got to bring a gun. And when I go downtown, any club, any bar, I don't have to worry about bringing a gun, bringing a weapon. I mean, I don't own guns because the lifestyle that I live, I don't have to own one that I feel like. I mean, I'm a 220-pound, 6'2 guy. I mean, I intimidate most people that I see. But I, whenever I go somewhere, I don't think I need a gun. I don't be in the mindset of, oh, I need to defend myself because wherever I go, I, I just plan on having a good time. And everywhere I've been in Savannah, nobody's threatened me, threatened my life or I never had to fight anybody outside or nothing like that. But you see situations like this where a situation happened inside the club and it brings, it, it, it take it outside the club and everybody starts shooting and it gives a bad reputation not only for that side of town, but that club, that bar, that whatever. So, I mean, I don't go to this club at all. Most, all the clubs I go to is downtown. And speaking of shootings, we had a shooting uh, Sunday morning at 10.30 in the uh, Fraser Homes slash Caton Homes uh, neighborhood. Police say a 14-year-old boy was shot and taken to the hospital in critical condition. Uh, they say the shooting was not random. They it, He was the attendant target. Now, um, I've really been trying to search pictures for this. I actually seen the picture of the 14-year-old boy and I, I really tried to put it on this uh, presentation, but I really couldn't find the picture. I, I searched up and down, up and down. But in the picture that I want to show you guys, there's one picture of him. You know, okay, he's inside a 
Fraser Holmes, and there's another picture of him. He's holding a, a gun. I don't. It might have been a 38 or some type of some type of caliber gun. But the same thing that I said in my Savannah Juvenile video and another video that I did with the the boy getting shot off of Daffin Park that I did maybe like a month or two ago. You gotta get your kids off the streets. I mean. 10.30 a.m. on a Sunday. You wouldn't think anybody would get shot that early on a Sunday. Hell, you would think somebody would be in church. But a 14-year-old boy, you know, he was shot. And I seen a lady, she posted a picture saying, well, with the actual picture that I really want to show you guys, she posted that picture. And she was saying, pray for the 14-year-old boy. He was shot. And it had the, she was praying, she said, pray for the 14-year-old boy, and the 14-year-old boy had the picture of him holding a gun. How can I pray for somebody like that? I can't pray for nobody like that if you you got a gun, because when you, people don't know about America is, we live in a gun culture. People brag about the guns, post guns online, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, not knowing that the best friends on social media is the police is Savannah Chatham Metro Police Department that's those are y'all best friends when y'all post pictures of guns and shit like that dope pills all that shit Savannah Metro that, that they y'all best friends they y'all number one most viewed person so if you think you can boast things like that I mean America is a gun culture so a lot of that a lot of those problems have to deal with uh generations that came before us and i just hope this 14 year old boy can take this as a lesson um stay the fuck out the streets and do something else with your life like i said when i was 14 years old i had a job i was working mcdonald's i mean it was petty money but it, it kept me out of doing a lot of dumb shit and that's the main thing i tell the my audience the people that's watching if you have kids in savannah and i don't know how your kids are i mean everybody grows up differently but you got to keep an eye on your kids man you know 14 years old you know he could have died and in my last piece of news i just want to talk about ever since the hurricane hurricane matthew uh city the city hasn't been the same of course i mean there's still some down trees that uh the city has to uh, come clean up and beyond the fact that having 22 million dollars worth of damage um like i said I live close by the West Lake. I don't live in West Lake, but I live close to it. And they have a lot of damage out there in their apartments. In their apartments, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna actually show a picture of what actually, how it actually looked like when the storm hit. And what the the residents over there at West Lake Apartments are complaining about is the fact that you have the maintenance people coming in and just really replacing the soggy drywall and, and just uh, trying to replace it with new stuff. But they're not really fixing the people that's staying in Westlake. They're not really, they say they're not really fixing the problem as far as the uh, the, the root of the problem. Because, they, 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 I mean, there's mold everywhere. Mold spreads, if you guys didn't know. I mean, if you get it on the floor, you got to take the whole floor out. You, I mean, you got to do... I mean, mold, mold just it's just very dangerous because if you even if you inhale it, it causes it causes breathing problems, and a lot of people don't know that as well. But I mean, they were they was just complaining about the maintenance people saying that uh, if you see mold, just put bleach on it, and bleach doesn't help. I mean, mold is gonna come back. You gotta get that piece and move it out. But Westlake Apartments is about 44 years old. I, I even asked my mom how old it was. And she said, my great grandma lived there. And I was like, uh, Jesus Christ, you know, I mean, that's an old, I mean, that's an old apartment. I mean, that's been up since 44 years ago. So a lot of them are complaining that they're not getting enough help from, uh, from the state and the government. And Westlake has a upper and bottom part. So a lot of the people upper parts of the apartment was fine but just that the lower part was flooded with two to four feet of water that you know you have mold down there and then that mold rises up to the top and it's, it, re it has a really funky smell man I I even had to live my first apartment I lived in it had a 
a water leak underneath the concrete and the the, the maintenance people was kind of like on this same stuff as well they didn't know what was the cause of it they was just um didn't have enough knowledge of what was the cause of the problem and i had to leave i didn't want to live there no more and i kind of feel what the people in westlake i uh, feel like because my first apartment was old uh, the, my first apartment was like i think they had built those in like the 80s now westlake is way older than my first apartment that i originally had but it's just a lot of people are complaining because I believe the government, uh, they gave them a voucher for, I think they gave a voucher for family, seven families for three days to live in a hotel. And after those three days, they got to, they had to come back and of course, you know, re live their regular lives. Um, in one case, one of the maintenance men, the, the, I mean, it, it is so bad in Westlake, the people who have, they have to leave because they don't want to breathe in that mold. So in the process of them getting the hotel when they came back they seen they stuff outside because you know they the maintenance people was thinking that they wasn't gonna come back and um they and the maintenance people can't actually do that that's unlawful so they had to actually put their stuff back in the in the in the apartments and what i can say about it is be honest with you don't rebuild it don't uh, renovate it just tear it down and build something way different I mean those apartments been there for the longest I mean they should be honest with you that whole area around there they should do something else with that area be honest with you I mean this is it the projects yeah kind of sort of I mean you hear about uh, a shooting happen here or there over there but I mean I feel like they should just destroy that area that that Westlake area I mean it's very old it's it's an old area man I mean it'll be they'll be better off just starting fresh because all the stuff that they have to the renovate even if they did go through that process I mean it would take time anyways and but the thing about Westlake the people in Westlake are you know they come from poverty I mean it's not the most lavish apartments at all I mean it's um, the people that live there uh, they don't have a, a high income I should say so those people they don't really have an option of where to go or where to, to move to or having another place to stay they, a lot of people don't have that option so um, I mean my opinion about it is just I mean if they just destroyed and build something else and maybe they could build something else and make it like affordable homes but way different from the style that Westlake is yeah but the people in Westlake they're really frustrated and I can see why they're frustrated because I mean the government should help in any situation where there's a, a natural disaster a hurricane tornado whatever the cause be I mean there should be a, a help benefit for everyone i mean they've been helping people on the landings people in the whitmarsh island people that live in better homes uh the higher income people i mean they fixing them off of course but when it comes to the inner city uh, i mean they don't really want to touch it like that so i mean get in that comment box uh let me know what you guys feel about this but that's all i have for today right now definitely like this video this is Pac-Man Jones with Savannah Seaport News and I'm out.